Hello, my name is Mark Baer. You're watching Your Town Television. My first guest today is Jay Pack. And welcome. And one of the th things that we do on this show is um, we, we think of ourselves as promoting the region, promoting the, the kind of romance of the area, because it, it, it is a romantic area. And one of the uh, groups of people that keep coming up in this conversation, especially when we have real estate people on, is uh, the people from Texas, the Dallas people, and the four monthers. And you represent that group. So we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, that relationship. And let's start with how you got here. And let's start actually as coming here and seeing this romance many years ago and actually ending up living here. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, Mark. I uh, appreciate you uh, ha having me uh, here and uh, to talk a little bit about uh, the, the Texas perspective. Yes. Okay. Uh, but I should say, I actually came to Carmel, and I don't remember a lot last week, but I remember this vividly. Uh, I had an aunt and uncle that moved uh, from Kansas City to the Bay Area uh, when I was 10. And my dad brought me out to the Bay Area, and we took a side trip. And I still, to this day, remember like it was yesterday when he walked me down Ocean and um, that first view of the Pacific. And it was just one of those great memories. So we're, we're both Midwesterners. I'm from Denver. You were from Kansas City. Right. Seeing the ocean the first time is fabulous. And so tell me, so you found the tapes. So, it, so then uh, our family came back uh, in, uh, two years later, 1964. And a few years ago, I was looking through some old home videos and found uh, movies of our whole family on the beach, Carmel Beach. And in the background is now where our uh, current home is, which was very uh, uh, impactful and sentimental. And uh, so we've been, that was my first introduction to Carmel. And, and uh, you know, it was, it made an impression that, uh, you know, that I'll, I'll always remember. And then you've been, now, how, how many years have you been actually uh, sp spending part of the year here? So we started coming out, actually, uh, our path was a little di bit different than uh, most Texans. We didn't come here for the golf and good weather, although that was a benefit. Uh, I actually started coming out here uh, for the produce industry. Uh, they had a retail conference in June and a food service conference in July. And uh, we started coming out here uh, when the kids were very young, in fact, I remember the first place we stayed, a, um, it was 87, I believe, and a new place was on Architectural Digest cover by the name of Mission Ranch. It just opened. Wow. <laughs> and uh, my wife says, we got to go stay there. And we stayed there, and the next year we came out with my youngest daughter, Gracie, who you remember, who I think was six months at the time when we stayed there. But we began um, renting because we said, you know, to come out in June, go home, come back in July. We finally started renting a house and just staying out a month at a time. And then, um, uh, like a lot of Texans, uh, we finally, I guess, 14 years ago, b uh, bought a home here. But we've been coming out here, I guess, for around 30 years. So part of uh, what we're, t we're, we're talking about is that people from Texas, first of all, tend to be and especially the, the the Dallas people I I know be the best uh, tend to be very civic minded, tend to be philanthropic, tend to be involved from what I know of very involved in Dallas philanthropy, and tend to get involved uh, in the community here if they're asked. And 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 one of the things I've always stressed is it's a is it's a two way street here, you know, the community has to reach out to them as much as they reach out to the community. And, not, and again, we are not talking about the people who are here for a month or two weeks, but the people who actually spend four months of the year here are, this is a very big part of their life. And so um, they will become involved if they're asked to become involved. Yeah, I, w I would agree. I mean, I would think I'm in general, I'm probably somewhat biased, but I do hear this from people outside of Dallas that Dallas tends to be a fairly philanthropic city, and and I think some of that carries over um, when when they whether they're going to Aspen or whether they're going to Carmel or wherever they're going. I think uh, that's part of the, uh, the 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 culture. And look, there's certainly opportunities here, uh, 
but I, I, I think it's only human nature. You, if you're, if you're here for three or four weeks, yeah. or six weeks, you yeah. tend to come out here and do and, and be on vacation, and be on involved. vacation, not get involved. But I, I do think for those of us that spend um, a, a longer period of time, there's, there's ample opportunity to get involved, whether, you know, it's uh, first tee or go red or make a wish or joining a local church or synagogue. It's um, um, you know, there's 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 plenty of there's no shortage of opportunities. Let's let's start uh, now. The other relationship that you have bridged, which I which I think is a crucial one here, is uh, the Salinas uh, Carmel uh, relationship and the Ser the Salinas Monterey relationship. That uh, they tend to be a, a, a separate thing, and you've you've managed to bridge those those two worlds here. Yeah. I, I I would agree, but I do think it's gotten better uh -huh. uh, um, it, from this perspective. When I first came here, uh, obviously most of my friends uh, were in Salinas because of the ag industry over there, and then Carmel was kind of this golfer's paradise and other world, and the two didn't seem to intertwine and mix, and it was just and and more and more you're finding people from. Salinas, either having primary or secondary homes here, uh, and you're finding um, people, and we'd like to encourage people to go over, whether it's seeing the Steinbeck Museum or go out and see, there's some great restaurants in Salinas. Um, you know, the, um, the news doesn't always, isn't, isn't Salinas' best friend with, with uh, talking about some of the issues going on over there. Uh, but I do think it's gotten better, but it's, it's clearly two different worlds. So one of the things, uh, let's talk about uh, going back with agriculture, the, uh, the apprentice program and, and some of that oh, that you put okay. together and how that happened. And so I actually was out here for the, um, at, at the food service conference and um, I had recently sold my company. I was meeting with the head of our trade association on our porch looking at the water and, and we, we were talking and I said, you know, there's really, uh, I think, a shortage of talent coming into our industry. And uh, we talked about that, and, and, I, and I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to do some things. I don't have the infrastructure to ad administrate a program, but uh, so we came up with this concept. We started with five domestic schools, Cal Poly, Cal Davis being two, Cornell being another one. Uh, but we started with five domestic schools, um, and over the 12 years, it's expanded to eight domestic and five international. And the whole idea was to go to... Uh, the faculty there have them bring uh, students. Uh, each, each school's allowed four students, and allow them to bring a, a a student that could potentially be interested in the the produce industry, and bring them to our annual conference for four or five days. We have special programs for them. We have mentors from all the major retailers or food service companies take the students around, and uh, to date we've had uh, 450 students take a job in the produce industry. So it's a program that... And, and everybody doesn't see the produce industry as a future if they're not totally surrounded by it. So that's, so this is an important reach out just in that, in that aspect, yeah. is that... Well, and, and it started with our own experience in recruiting uh -huh. at, at our company. Uh -huh. uh, we, uh, we, were, we felt like we weren't finding enough talent in the industry. We went down the road to Texas A&M and started recruiting and had a phenomenal success with uh, bringing students in that were not studying produce, but they were in ag programs. So we were trying to bridge them, their interest and bring and get them interested in the produce industry, and we had luck with it. So we basically took that concept and expanded it on a, uh, on a bigger scale. But it's been a lot of fun, and we've had a great run, and, um, and it's uh, personally very satisfying for both me and my wife, Ruthie. Uh, so one of the, one of the uh, things that I find so interesting about, uh, particularly about the Salinas industry, uh, the food industry, is the involvement with the technology industry. And it really is on the forefront of, 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 of what's going on. So kind of, um, I want you to tell me how special what goes on, how special of a place Salinas is in terms of the, the food industry as, as, an, as an agriculture person. Well, I, I think it's first, I think it's interesting that there's um, how few people, when you get beyond uh, 20 or 30 miles Salinas Valley, really comprehend the, uh, uh, the enormous impact 
uh, not only on the state, but on the country that agriculture has. I mean, as you may or may not know, I mean, eight months a year, this is the salad bowl of, of the country. And, um, and it, it's, it's, so it's, the, its impact is not only significant for the state, but it's significant, uh, you know, for the entire, uh, you know, for the entire country in terms of uh, providing food. You mentioned technology, and interesting enough, uh, where I'm going later this afternoon is the beginning of a, uh, I think it's in its fifth year, is a technology conference trying to bridge Sil Silicon Valley with Salinas Valley. Which, right. In trying to merge the technology of Sil Silicon Valley with the food production and food industry. And, you know, whether it's drones or... Uh, uh, S synchronizing the water usage, the... Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the, the opportunities are... Are, are enormous and and it's it's getting those two communities together and um, it's it's a great great program and uh, I think you know there's an example of Sal of the Salinas group reaching out uh, beyond it's just it's the valley and trying to uh, really create an impact and so I, I used the word uh, mini-tropolis here because it's it's small, it's got a little bit of everything, but this is a global place, and certainly global ar global agriculture is uh, here and cutting edge. Ab absolutely. I mean, um, maybe not 20 years ago, but mm -hmm. uh, most of the major ag companies have some type of global footprint. Mm -hmm. Now you've been, some of the other things that you've, and I, and I must stop and say, happy anniversary. Oh. A shout out to your wife, Ruthie. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is uh, a great force and a one of my favorite people on the planet. And uh, thank you. She's a great booster. So, sh so j just as as a typical of a Texas person, she she plays the role of ambassador. She's gone on the movie tour three times. Right. Uh, she's uh, she'll take everybody like what you were saying to me. She'll take them to Salinas to go to the fields. This is something that other people won't do. She, she can't always get them to go, but she it's not for lack of trying. Yeah, she really encourages people visiting the area to go over to Salinas and um, and, and, and whether it's an organized or unorganized uh, tour, you know, try to see the area and, and spend some time over there and. Um, uh, you know, it just, it, it, it still amazes me how many people come here, whether it's for a week, a month, or four months, and don't realize the impact of, uh, of Salinas. Yeah, it, and, 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 I, and I think your idea of, of a actually having more organized tours like they did with the wine industry is a, is a great idea. I mean, it seems like a kind of a no-brainer. Well, I think um, these executives get busy and they've got you know, they're going to run a company and they've got a lot of things to do and setting up organized tours maybe isn't top of mind, but maybe uh, one day. Um, so let's, uh, uh, some of your other involvements here uh, is uh, the Naval Postgraduate School. So uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, I actually got involved with that by, uh, through a friend of ours, ironically from Dallas, but has been coming out here longer than we have. Um, and he invited me to a, uh, he said, I want you to come over to my house next Friday for a breakfast and you'll meet some people from the uh, Naval Postgraduate School and not realizing exactly what it was. It was their bicycle club and I think they do a 40 mile bike ride and they recruit volunteers at a 20 mile mark to serve them breakfast. And you have an hour, hour and a half to meet some of the most bright, fascinating, interesting uh, young, young men and women that you can imagine. And so, um, uh, I made the mistake of uh, saying, "Well, how do you do this?" <laughs> and uh, let's—I think we're on our sixth year that we've uh, we've hosted hosted uh, ho hosted the bicycle ride. But it's a it's a great opportunity, and and I'd also encourage anybody that has not toured the facility uh, to please to do that because it's a it's a remarkable facility. It's so impressive. Yeah, it's, people are so impressive. Uh, First T is is another great. Uh, um, organization here that you've been involved with? Well, uh, in partially through my friend David Gill, who yes. you know, uh, who's been very involved. Um, uh, we, we, were ex we knew about First Tee because it's a national program, but uh, uh, um, I think it gets, because of the golf tournament here and just being the golf, one of the golf capitals of the world, it gets a little bit more attention. Um, but uh, 
David and, uh, and a group of the people in the ag industry have just done a phenomenal job of, of uh, with the program over there. The, f the new facility um, is, 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 is first class. And um, once you go to the uh, dinner and see what the what they're doing and the you impact meeting, they're having. You start meeting the kids. And they that's that's a part of the program every year. Yeah. Yeah, once you see that, um, it, it's it's hard not to be uh, impressed with uh, with what they're doing because they really do make an impact on these young kids. And then uh, just lives. from a just from the uh, viewer's point of view, it's it's one of the most fun events to go to because the the pros take it very seriously. They they take their yeah. mentoring very seriously, and you get to. You don't have the crowd, so you can get close and you can hear what they're telling the the kids. And yeah. everybody who wants to play like, is really is really listening because you're getting a very yeah. good golf lesson yeah. out out there. No, the, and, the, and so it's a really special event, and it does a, a lot of great uh, it, it does a lot of great work. No, I think that's a great point about the tournament itself because yeah. you have some of the top pros, but you don't have thirty five thousand people around them either. And um, it's just a it's a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a fun fun afternoon. So don't you think, after all these years of being here, that you and I would both play better by now? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is this is something that's coming here hasn't solved. <laughs> is there anything you can do about that? I don't know what to do. But, uh, that's the one thing I, I, I wish the uh, the game was a little <laughs> little better. That that hasn't improved. But uh, and and. Uh, so uh, maybe that's one of the reasons I keep doing stuff in the ag industry. I yeah, I know that's going to need to support me. Yeah, I guess it's, it's not going to come from <laughs> from golf, but it is. It's such a it, to bring people out here. It, it really it, it's as much fun to play as it is to bring people visiting, and watch them, and, and and what you and I may take for granted. Um, not that we would. I but, don't, th and I think that's special here. We don't. I mean, when when do you walk out onto your porch and look out and and not go wow? Never, never. Okay. <laughs> You're watching your town TV. I'm with Jay Pack. We'll be back after a moment. Thank you very much. Thank you.